سلام خوش اومدید به یه ویدیو دیگه از کانال رد باز این بار عزیزان دل قرار یه مصاحبه داشته باشیم با آقای ریک پاسکالون صدا پیشه کارکتر ویرو اسکلتا در سگانه مافیا چند تا نکته رو نکته مهم رو خیلی سریع بهتون میگم بعد بریم با هم مصاحبه رو ببینیم و بعد آخر ویدیو هم باز سری نکات خیلی مهم میگم اونا رو هم لطفا وقت بذارید گوش کنید عشق منید نکته اول مهمتر این نکته این که این ویدیو این مصاحبه قطعا پر از سپویلره اگه سگانه مافیا رو تجربه نکردید و سبک داستانش رو دوست دارید فرصت نشده تجربهش کنید دوست دارید در آینده دور یا نزدیک بازی رو بازی کنید تجربه کنید ترجیحا اینو نبینید که داستان بازی براتون اسپویل نشه چون در روی پایان های بازی صحبت شده در روی یه سری نکات کلیدی تو یه بازی صحبت شده که داستان رو براتون دوست میکنه اگه خودتون تجربهش نکردید هرچند که این ویدیو رو نبینید به ضرر منه ولی خب اگه دوست دارید اسپویل نشه و ببینید به ضرر خودتونه این از این پس از این جوابش اگه دوست ندارید بازی داستان بازی براتون اسپویل بشه نبینید کلا این نکته های بعدی رو هم گوش نکنید دیگه الان ویدیو رو ببندید دیسلایک هم کردید کردید برید دیگه خدافظ بعد نه دیسلایک نکنید دیسلایک زشته بعد جونم براتون بگه که نکته بعدی اینه که عزیزان دل دقیقا همینقدر سوالاتی که من پرسیدم همینقدر سوالات بود که نتونستم بپرسم چرا چون که یه سریا جوابشون رو نمیدونست یه سریا رو هم نمیتونست بگه مثلا چهار پنج سوال در کارکتر جو داشتم در این که چه بلایی سر جو اومد آیون کارکتری که اون شخصیتی که آخر مافیا سه میبینیم جو هست یا نه در یه سری توریایی که در کارکتر هست سوال داشتم که هیچ کدوم از اینا رو جوابش رو نمیدونست و به خاطر همین نتونستم بپرسم کلا سوالات هست شد از سوی مصاحبه بعد یه سری سوالات بود درباره پایان های متفاوت بازی چون که قرار بود بازی چند تا پایان داشته باشه نه فقط یکی و قرار بود ازش بپرسم که دیالوگی برای این پایان ها ضبط کرده چه اطلاعاتی میتونه به ما بده که نمیتونست بگه بعد یه سری مأموریت های اضافه قرار بوده بازی داشته باشه مأموریت هایی از قبیل مأموریت هایی که ستینگشون جنگ جهانی دوم بوده و قرار بوده اونجا اتفاق بیفته و خب اطلاعاتی در این زمین هم نمیتونست ما بوده کلن خیلی سوالات بود که یا نمیدونست یا نمیتونست و اون سوالات کلن هست شده بخاطر همین مصابه کوتاه از مصابه قبلی حداقل کوتاه تره ولی در نهایت به نظرم زمانش خوبه زمانی هست که انگار هر چیزی که هر بحثی که تو مصابه پیش میاد تو همین 20 25 دقیقه دقیق نمیدونم چقدر هنوز ادیت شمون نشده ولی هر بحثی که تو این مصابه پیش میاد بحث جالبیه سرگرم کننده است به نظرم برای خودم که از مصابه قبلی خیلی سرگرم کننده تر بود و به نظر نکات جالب بیشتری داشت و اینم از این نکته آخر هم این که همینطور که میبینید این مسابقه که من میکنم کلن ویو زیاد نمیگیره از اونجایی که کانالم کوچیکه کانالم زیاد ویو نداره بهترین راه برای این که این مسابقه بیشتر دیده بشه اینه که شما از دل به دوستانتون معرفی کنید بگید که بیایید این ویدیو رو ببینید یه برادر کچلی با یه صدا پیشه مثلا مصاحبه کرده و دوستانتون بیاین ویدیو رو ببینن لایک کنن کامنت بذارن و بعد اونا هم به دوستانشون معرفی کنن و هی من ویدیو بیشتر شه پولاش هم خودم بگیرم براتون نه ولی آره تنها راهش اینه پس شما عزیزان دل لطف کنید که این ویدیو ها رو پیشنهاد کنید به دوستانتون اگه اینستاگرام فضای مجازی جای فعالیت دارید یه لینکی چیزی بذارید به چهار نفر، پنج نفر، ده نفر هر چقدر بیشتر بهتر معرفی کنید که بیان ببینن لایک و کامنت هم یادتون نره اینا خیلی به دیده شدن ویدیو بیشتر کمک میکنه بیشتر از این صحبت نمی کنم بریم مصاحبه ببینیم آخر مصاحبه هم با یه سری نکات خیلی مهمو بهتون میگم اونا رو هم خواهشن وقت بذارید گوش کنید دمتون گرم امیدوارم خوشتون بیاد مخلصم برو بریم alright okay so um, the very first thing that I want to know is just how did you get the role of Vito Escaleta? Uh, how I got the role was um, I went in and met with the director. This is many, many years ago. This is probably 12, 14 years ago. Yeah. Um, we met, we talked, we're from the same area in New York. We had a very similar background. And we were, he was just, uh, at the time it was just a script and he was having me read a bunch of different characters. And he finally said, you know, I think you'd actually be right for Vito. 
And I had no idea what he was talking about. And I was like, great, good, you know. And then I didn't hear anything for like six months. And then they called back and they go, yeah, you, you booked this job and uh, it's going to be a good one. And I went in and we started recording and I was like, oh my God, I'm on every single page. <laughs> <laughs> thousands and thousands of lines, but it was great. So you didn't know you were going to be the main character? No idea. All right. Okay. And bef before that, you, you didn't know that you were recording for a game, did you? You know, I, I had done a few games before that. Um, oh, yeah, The Darkness, right? That was, I did. Uh, that was after. That was I, did, after um, right? I did The Matrix. I did a few other oh, sm the Matrix. You know, smaller parts. Uh, and Oh, no, you know, actually what happened was I did this one particular one, which I can't remember the title right now. And the guy that was directing Mafia 2 had played that game and liked my performance and was curious to know who I was. And he just liked how I was just as an actor. He had no idea that I was Italian, that I would fit this role so well. And that's how we got to meet. Okay. Okay. So on the set of Mafia 2, what was your best and your worst memory? Uh, honestly, there was no bad memories. It really was all good. It was really positive. Uh, the best part was that I got to work with some really good friends, like real friends in real life. Joe, Barbro, and Henry Tomasino were both played by very, very good friends of mine. Uh, Bobby Costanzo and Sonny Marinelli are dear friends still to this day. And so getting to work with them was the best. So you knew them before you started working on Mafia? Yeah, yeah, we so, were friends for many years. So it, was, it wasn't like working to you, it was just... Like going to meet your friends, like, hanging out, having a drink. Exactly. Having a <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that must have been fun. It was the best. All right. Uh, have you played Mafia 2 yourself? Are you a gamer yourself? No. Never Not played at all. once. Never once. <laughs> None I've of your games? Of the, uh, I've seen a lot of the cutscenes. I've seen a lot of people, you know, people send me stuff. But I, I was never a gamer and uh, my kids are. They How get a big they? kick out of it. Oh, there my kids are 14 and 11. Ah, nice. So I don't really let them play Mafia 2, but they'll, <laughs> they'll play some of the other games that I'm in and they get a big kick out of hearing me. I actually played it when I was younger than them, I think. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Mafia 1. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, what kind of games would you like to be in next? You know, it's such a fun world because you can literally be anything. Uh, yeah. You know, just it's just the limits of what you can imagine, and um, so I have I have fun. I'm working on a bunch of different stuff right now. Of course, I can't talk about any of it because it's all you know security. But I'm getting to do a lot of really fun things, and it'll be out. They'll be out pretty soon. Uh, they'll they'll all be coming out within the next year or so. Are you the yeah. main character? Or uh, some main, some supporting. Um, it, it all it's all different, but uh, really really fun stuff. There's there's nothing you can say about them. I can't. It, you know, they, they get very, you know, they really, especially now, uh, security is yeah. everything and they keep everything Understand. very tight until it's released. Yeah, true. So, Mafia 2, for a while, it held the Guinness World Records for the most F words in a video game. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that this was going to happen while you were recording your lines? And no, that there's uh, going to be so much swearing involved that you're going to set a record? <sighs> No, uh, we knew we knew we were pushing the edge, you know, when we were yeah. recording it. Uh, in fact, they said something. They go, this is like a joke. He was like, oh, we're going to break a record. We didn't really think we were, but we were trying to make the dialogue authentic and real. And, you know, a lot of people do talk like that, you know, and... Um, And we were just, I mean, everything was, was in the script. We didn't add any more than was in there. Um, <laughs> it was enough. But, um, I mean, we had fun with it. We had fun saying the words and saying the, and acting out the scenes. We were having a great time, even the, even the hard scenes where you're killing people. And, yeah. You know, but it was, you know, we had no idea. So none of those efforts you dropped were improvised? No. They were no. <laughs> scripted, right? When we were first, yeah, when we were first, the script was written, <clears throat> excuse me, we, the script was written uh, by a uh, writer from the Czech Republic. Yeah. So he was Czech, 
the script was then translated by a British gentleman. So it was in perfect English. Yeah. But in that British kind of dialogue, we, <laughs> right, we transformed it into British to then New York Italian yeah. street language, you know, and, uh, and when, when all that was being developed, that's when all of the words came in and all the F-bombs. But once we had it kind of done and written, then we stuck to it as written. Okay. There's a, there's a model in game. It's called monic.sds. Uh, in the game for us, that, uh, the model was later edited and repurposed as Joanne, the shop assistant, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a theory that says that Monique was supposed to be Vito's girlfriend, but she was removed from the game for unknown reasons. And is there any truth to this? Uh, if yes, why was she removed? Do you have any ideas? You know, the, the as far as the game play and the game development, yeah. They, that's completely separate from what I do. I mean, they okay. gave me certain information about certain characters, uh, about who they were and our history together. But as far as the overall design of the game, I have nothing to do with that. In fact, I, that is so far outside of my brain, like how all that stuff works. You know, I, I give these guys so much credit because the, the amount of work that goes into creating this stuff Yeah. Uh, it blows my mind. Yeah, But um, no, to answer your question, I I don't know. Um, the the characters that were in the game that ended up in the game, you know, were there by design, and and that's what they just you know, that's how it ended up. Okay, so why do you think, in your opinion, uh, why is it that Weirdo never had a girlfriend, a love interest, where it worked real well in the first game with the first protagonist? Mm -hmm. But in the se second game, there was no love interest for Widow. Uh, I think it would have gotten in the way of his of his mission. You know, he was he was kind of. I mean, in my mind, he was dragged into this life uh, as a way to help his family, and he had a kind of a reluctant approach to being a gangster. Um, yeah. But of course, the thing that you say you must never do is what you end up doing. I mean, that's that's the structure of a great, exactly yeah. tragic story. Uh, I think a love interest would have gotten in the way of that. Uh, I think again, they did it by design. Um, the love interest was between me and Joe. Yeah, <laughs> our best friends. Precisely, you know, yeah. that's that was the story, and that's the and I think that's the story that also resonated with people around the world this friendship and then when he lost that friend it was it was tragic yeah that makes sense that makes total sense yeah okay so were you expecting such a huge reaction to the game and the character of your skeleton were you aware that the mafia trilogy has thousands if not millions of fans in iran and all over the world and so far Before this conversation, have you had any interactions with your fans from Iran? I had no idea that the game was going to be as popular as it became. I am humbled to this day that people around the world still enjoy it, still react to it, still want to hear it, uh, are captivated by the character, yeah. the characters that we created. Um, And uh, I've had some interaction with uh, my Iranian friends. Uh, and I must say, uh, Buya Jan, merci. Merci. Well, <laughs> I worked where did that, that come from? <laughs> I worked on that for you. I have great respect for your, Thank for you. your Thank culture, you so much. for your language, for your, um, your spirit. You know, we're, we're all just people in this world. And the fact that I can reach out across... Uh, across the world and uh, you know have this relationship with with people it's it's just amazing to me and I'm I'm very grateful thank you so much I appreciate that that, that means a lot honestly to me and lots of other people thank you <laughs> I'm kind of speechless right now <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think I you didn't think I had that in I me did I did not you? expect that I was going to teach you some <laughs> actually good. I got you surprised <laughs> You had a role in The Sopranos, 
Road mm-hmm. to Respect and the uh, video game uh, for PS2, yeah. I think, PlayStation 2. Mm-hmm. Um, how was working with the amazing cast of The Sopranos? And is there anything you can tell us about the late James Gandolfini? So, uh, although we never worked in the same room together, we were always recording our stuff um, separately. But I did, uh, I have many friends who were on the show, and I did get to meet uh, James. uh, And he was so completely opposite from Tony Soprano in real life. He was lovely, charming, uh, very, very gracious man. Um, Big heart, big smile, uh, and just a great guy. May he rest in peace. I was yeah. I was really upset when we lost him. That was that was hard. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you could meet Vito in the beginning of the game, and knowing all you know right now from the game story, from whatever happens to his character, what would be the advice that you would give him? Uh, would you tell him to do something, not do something? Yeah, go to college, get a job. <laughs> <laughs> don't be a gangster <laughs> read a book <laughs> read a book Vito <laughs> he's he's actually very knowledgeable for someone he who is. didn't go to college you know well that's it I mean that's the, that that also was you know part of the I mean I tried to look you know uh, you always bring something of yourself into every character that you play yeah. um, I chose not, I, I'm not saying that I'm the smartest guy in the world, but I chose to bring whatever intelligence that I possessed into that character. I chose not to make him dumb in any sense. He wasn't written that way. There's always the temptation to uh, feed into that because we've seen it many times, but uh, he does. He did have an intelligence. He, in other circumstances, probably could have been a, a, a doctor or you know an attorney or something, but... Um, you know, that's not how his life went. So he used his knowledge to survive on the street. But yeah, street smart. Makes that's him interesting. Was, yeah. yeah, street smart. Oh, so, next question. I'll tell you, there are certain times that I wish I had some veto in me. I'll tell you that. <laughs> True. <laughs> I like the way he takes care of business. Oh, I thought you mean like maybe you want to kill someone or something. No, no, I'm just saying, you know, sometimes, you know, and I've, I've heard this from other people. They go, man, you know, uh, the way Tony Soprano, uh, same thing, you know, yeah. people admired those characters because there's always a little bit of us that goes, oh, I wish I could just handle things the way Tony Soprano did or the way Vito Scaletta did, you know. Yeah, yeah they're such alpha males, you know. They, yeah. Everyone respects them. Everyone follows them. Yep. Such good leaders. And respect. What, let me ask you a question. What did you like about Mafia 2? What was it that that stayed with you after playing it? It was um, his, um, Vito's perspective on life, the way he looked at life and the way he changed throughout the game, his mm-hmm. character development. And um, apart from him, I really like Joe. He was really yeah, funny. Everybody, everybody loves Joe. Such yeah. a funny guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very real. I mean, again, that was, you know, all his stuff was scripted. But Bobby Costanzo, yeah. in life, is that guy. He's full of joy, full of, he's always got a joke. He's always got a smile. <coughs> he's, he's great. Yeah, he's. If, if you don't mind me asking, where did you guys meet? How did you guys meet? We met uh, in in Los Angeles. We were both part of the same acting group. Um, one thing about Bobby, he's very, very dedicated actor. He's very well trained. He can do a bunch of different things. He tends to get cast always as the, you know, mafia guy, but he's a really, really smart actor. And we met in a class and um, we'd known each other for years. Uh, and that was the first time we actually got to work together. He was on Friends too. You you were there too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we didn't work. We didn't work together, but we were both on the show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Vito appeared briefly 
as an unnamed tits man in the epilogue of Mafia Definitive Edition. He was mm-hmm. a protagonist of Mafia 2 and also an underboss in Mafia 3. Yep. As the only character who has appeared in all three games, which one of these three performances do you think had more of a of an impact on the audience and on the world of mafia hmm it's a good question uh obviously in mafia 2 he's the main character he's the protagonist he's in almost every scene so as far as discovering who the character is i think you learn about him in mafia 2 the one thing about mafia 3 that was great is that we got to do uh motion capture for the characters and and all the cutscenes. so i was able to the you know the technology didn't exist then when we were doing mafia 2 um so to be able to bring the physical nature of Vito into those scenes and it made it to me so realistic uh and it it resonated even more for me uh, even though I didn't have quite as much to do, um, I feel like that performance was much more uh, naturalistic and I felt more involved in the character, you know. Uh, and uh, and I love those scenes. I love those cutscenes from Mafia 3. I think they're great. Yeah. What characters do you think were crucial to the success of Mafia 2? We kind of talked about this. You said Joe and... Who else? Yeah, Joe and Henry, to me, uh, were the characters that... not Because not only did they have, um, we you know, the friendships, but then also the, you know, the dark sides of them as well. You know, Henry has a dark side. Uh, even Joe has a bit of a dark, you know, side. And, um, and to... And to play with that, the dark and the light, always, uh, was, was really interesting. And I think... I think that's why those three characters really stand out too uh, because they share some of the same qualities yeah that's that's actually true yeah i never thought about that they mm-hmm. do share something yeah okay um out of the three endings the three endings that Vito could have in mafia 3 dying at the hands of lincoln clay carrying as an underboss or assuming control of the city and gradually building an empire which one do you think he deserves most after everything that he went through come on how do you think i'm going to answer that (laughs) Vito gets everything come on of course of course of course but but do you think he deserves it like do you think he was a good character that deserves all the good things or do you think that uh you know it's a great it's a great question uh does he deserve it you know uh the question is do we pay for our sins you know do you get rewarded for being a ruthless killer or do you get what's coming to you uh does he deserve it I think he could say a case could be made for any of those endings, yeah. which, I, which is, I guess, why the developers chose to have three endings, because he does really deserve to get killed because of all the bad things he did. He also deserves to live because of what he did. Yeah. Uh, you know, his, his no, again, dark and light, his nobility, the things that he did to, you know, save his family, to save his, try to save his friends versus being a cold-blooded killer, which was so again dark and light i don't know that there's any right or wrong answer personally i would like to see Vito live and and run the world but that's not my choice okay but it could be if you play if you actually played mafia 3 could be that's true (laughs) in your opinion if uh, put your knowledge aside what you know from the developers and the companies on all that in your opinion should there be a mafia 4 uh, absolutely. I, I think there's much more story that could be told. Uh, I think, you know, uh, I don't know how it would work with, you know, the way the characters have come and gone. I mean, there, there could always be uh, a prequel or, you know, uh, you know, something that happens in between. But uh, I would love to see it. Yeah. And I think uh, I think the fans would like to see it. I mean, the uh, I certainly love the characters and it's a, just a great story and uh you know more more than ever we need good storytelling 
you know uh, so i hope so yeah is there anything you would like to say to them as widow please <laughs> <laughs> all right uh as Vito? yes please uh hello my friends this is Vito scaletta reaching out across the pond to send you my best stay safe stay strong keep the faith and remember wherever you go whatever you do Vito's always got your back that's it that's it awesome thank you thank you so much can I teach you some Persian phrases for sure Asian phrases sure that you would say all right uh the first one is um Baba Barikallah it means good on you it, it's a saying that I always say in my videos <laughs> Baba Baba Barikallah Baba Barikallah <laughs> Duse Daram Iran That's this it. is Vito Scaletta that's it perfect perfect thank you so much I had stay a... safe and well and I mean I meant that uh you know it's uh you know it's people just people that change the world not anybody else so yeah. you know i appreciate you uh you reaching out i appreciate uh your friendship and uh stay thank safe you, sir thank you All sir right. i appreciate your time have a good one take care no worries درود بر شما عزیزانی که تا آخر مصاحبه رو دیدید لایک کردید کامنت گذاشتید و حالا اومدید آخر ویدیو ببینید من میخوام چی بهتون بگم ایشالله که تمام شما عزیزانی که این کارا رو کردید به تک تک آرزوهاتون برسید و بهترین ها نصیبتون بشه سالم و سلامت باشید جیبتون پرپول باشه و فلان به ما نیداستان خب دمتون گم عشق منید یه نکته خیلی مهم که میخوام بهتون بگم اینه که من لینک اینستاگرام ایشون رو آقای ریک پاسکالان رو میذارم قسمت توضیحات ویدیو قسمت دیسکریپشن ویدیو شما عزیزان دلی که اینستاگرام دارید یه لطفی بکنید به من برید روش کلیک کنید ایشون رو فالو کنید و زیر حالا عکسی میذاره ویدیویی میذاره هر پستی گذاشته برید لایک کنید اونا رو زیرش چارت قلب بذارید پرچم ایران بذارید عشق بورزید محبت بورزید اینو میگم به خاطر چند تا نکته چند تا دلیل دارم برای زدن این حرف یک اینکه اولا آقای ریک پاسکالون دیدی تو طی ویدیو خودش رفته و فارسی یاد گرفته بود برای شماها برای من و که اون قسمت آخر که من بهش دادم قسمت وسط ویدیو اون چیزی که گفت واقعا اصلا زبون من بند اومد انقدر چیز عجیب بود و یهویی بود و واقعا توقع نداشتم و دمش گرم واقعا دمش گرم که وقت گذشته بود یه تیکه فارسی یاد گرفته بود که جبران محبت طرفداراشو بکنه و وقتی همچین کسی ارزش قائل میشه اینقدر برای من و شمایی که ایرانی باشیم به نظرم خوب میشه اگه ما هم یه جوری جبران کنیم این کارو براش بریم زیر پست چارت قلب بذاریم یه محبتی بهش بکنیم بلکه جبرانش دلیل دومی که این حرفو دارم میزنم عزیزان دل اینه که الان تو تمام کشورهای دنیا مردم دنیا و حال دولت هاشون دیده خوبی نسبت ایرانیان ندارن چرا چون که رسانه های خارجی رسانه های غربی معمولا خبر خوبی از سمت ایران پخش نمیکنن یعنی دست میزنن رو بدترین و کثیفترین و زشترین خصوصیات اخلاقی ایرانیا و کارهایی که ایرانی انجام میدن و اونا رو رسانه ای میکنن و تو کل دنیا پخش میکنن که بتونن اینجوری رفتار بدی که با ایران دارن رو توجیه کنن که کاملا به نفع خودشونه یعنی الان پس فردا به ما حمله نظامی هم بکنن و تمام مردم بیگناه رو بکشن یه جوری شده که مردم دنیا نمیرن خیر دولتشون رو بگیرن یه قشر کم و روشن فکری شاید اعتراض کنن ولی اکثریت میگن خب اینا تروریستن اینا آدم کشن اینا نمیدونم از زن و متنفرن اینا بچه بازن اینا حقشونه خب این دیدیه که نسبت به ایرانیا دارن همه جا و حالا نمیخوام ب... نمیخوام تو سر این بحث کنم که پشت این قضیه کیه چرا همچین دیدی به ما دارن آیا حق ما هست یا نیست ولی هم من میدونم هم شما میدونیم که ایرانی ها فقط این نیستن ایرانی ها یه سری خصوصیت اخلاقی خوب هم دارن و اگه فرصتش پیش بیاد شرایطش فراهم شه میتونن خیلی خیلی بهتر باشن یعنی پتانسیل خوب بودن رو داریم ولی شرایطش نیست خب و یه جوری الان تو دنیا دارن ایرانیا رو نشون میدن که حتی خودمون هم از خودمون خیلی جاها بدمون میاد خب 
و این به نظر من بده و به نظرم از فرصت های این شکلی باید آدم استفاده کنه ما ایرانی ها باید استفاده کنیم که اون بود مثبت خودمون اون خصوصیت اخلاقی خوب ایرانی ها رو به کل دنیا نشون بدیم و نشون بدیم حتی اگه شده به یک نفر که ما ایرانی ها اون چیزی که از ما نشون میدن نیستیم و حداقل مردم ایران اونطوری نیستن یا حداقل پتانسیل اینو داریم که اونطوری نباشیم این از این و جونم براتون که به نظرم از مسابقه قبلی خود پیشرفت کرده بودم استرس هم کمتر شده بود سوالات هم بهتر شده بود مصاحبه گریم بهتر شده بود کلمه از مصاحبه گری و هنوز خب قطعا آماتورم آماتور گونه مصاحبه میکنم و بی تجربه هم تو این زمینه ولی با هر مسابقه قول میدم بهتون بهتر بشم سوالات بهتری طرح کنم واکنش های بهتری داشته باشم و کلا ویدیوها بهتر بشه تازه اول کار مصاحبه‌ای بیشتری تو راه عزیزان دل قول میدم که هر مصاحبه از قبلیش بهتر باشه حداقل حداقل خودم به عنوان مصاحبه کننده بهتر باشم از مصاحبه قبلی و اینکه مرسی که لایک میکنید کامنت میذارید و به دوستانتون پیشنهاد میکنید و مرسی که اینقدر گلید و ویدیو رو از اول تا آخر دیدید امیدوارم که خوشتون اومده باشه لذت برده باشید سرگرم شده باشید مخلصم تا ویدیوهای بعدی خداحافظ